So uh, that's fine. So uh, just uh, before starting the session, actually, I, uh, I just want to uh, uh, take your minute. Uh, I not planned this, but yeah, I want to give a, a, a quick walkthrough. What uh, so as we talk, take the three sessions back to back about the AI, and everybody is talk about the models, and the data scientists, and a lot of mathematics, and PhDs, and a, a lot of big terms that uh, we as a software engineer does not know about. Okay, and uh, when we see the chat GPTs and other type of AI tools. And we see the openings in the nokri.com that every company is looking for the AI. <laughs> okay, so, and we thought that how we can uh, uh, scale up ourselves, like uh, some of things that uh, we can might be start learning about the, the data, we can go for the PhD, mathematics, uh, let's start writing the small models. So, uh, uh, nothing to worry about. So, writing the models uh, is a, just a part of the AI. So it's not a complete AI field. So writing the model is one thing. Yeah, it's an important part. Without model, we have nothing. But uh, yeah, running the model in production is a very important part. And we are the software developers uh, in, the, in the industry. Like I am from the 13 years. I started with the Java. I work in Go. I work in Kubernetes. And now the every, everyone is talking about the AI. And I come like, OK, I don't know anything about the AI. I, my mathematics is not good in the college. <laughs> just passed. So how can I contribute? How can I save my career? And I, I get to know that uh, let's not uh, go to the field of the models. Let's uh, go to the field, the platform who serve the models. So uh, one is an app, and uh, there's a model, and then the intelligent app developers. So this is a new field. So generating the model is one thing, and run the model is a completely different thing. So in a Red Hat, uh, as, as you give the introduction, I'm working on the Red Hat OpenShift data science platform. So it's a platform uh, where the data scientists can come and deploy their models. They can create the models. But what I do, I we work to develop that platform. And it doesn't require any mathematics. So just require simple, some cloud technologies, some Go, Java, Python, this type of technology that we could do. OK, and uh, yeah, and this uh, PPD is one of the part, OK? Okay, now I can start. Okay, so I, I feel that audience is pretty motivated that they can work, right? Okay, so stages of the model, uh, model stages. So first one is to write the model. Okay, this is what the data scientists do, and uh, we don't know much about it. Okay, even personally, I don't know. Then there is a train model. Uh, after writing the model, they train the models on very gigabytes, terabytes of data. Okay, it's a tedious task. And after that, we deploy the models on the production so that the end user can come and use them. Okay, and uh, this is the third part where currently I am working in, where I'm contribute. So there are various softwares uh, which uh, enable this type of flow. So first one uh, to write the model, we have the Jupyter notebooks, a very common. It's Python. You can write there. To train the model, there are various sof uh, various software like uh, Ray or uh, Codeflares. And similarly, to deploy the models, uh, KSERV is an open source community uh, which enable to deploy the model. Okay. Now, what is model serving? So, as I say, uh, to deploy the model so that uh, the end user can use it. That's it. That's a model serving. Uh, we come with a trained model, we deploy it, and expose the some endpoint so the user can call it. So, like the chat GPT is deployed in some server, uh, we have the endpoint, we have the UI, we just make the call and give the response. So. That's, that's the model serving. OK. Uh, so how the uh, model serving works? So it's pretty simple. So everybody has uh, almost work on the Java application. So in the Java applications, we have uh, application servers like uh, JBoss and uh, Apache Tomcats and uh, Spring Boot. What we do, we start the application server, we put the jar file into it, and that's it. It starts serving our request. So similar things has happened in the model servers as well, in the model serving as well. So in the model serving field, we have uh, model servers. And then we come with a model. We deploy the models in the model server. And that's it. And you start serving your request. So there are multiple model servers like OpenVINO, Skitlearn, TensorFlow. These are the sum of the name. There are many model server available in the market. Now KSERV, uh, KSERV is an open source community which tackles the challenge to deploy the AI models on the Kubernetes. Okay, So what it does. Uh, it provides a standard inference platform, 
and a standard inference protocol. So that's pretty important. So as you can see, there are multiple uh, model servers available in market. And to integrate a single <coughs> technology, to integrate with every model server is hard until there is some specification. So what the case of do, case of follow a specification. So every model server which uh, follow the specification, okay, they can integrate it. Okay, and uh, like the other specification which no one follows, uh, in the field of a model servers, every model server uh, follow the specification. So it's pretty common that uh, everyone follows it. Okay. So, uh, okay. okay, come back to this again. So as we know in the Java application server, we can deploy a one uh, jar file or var file in the application server and start, like we do with the Spring Boot, right, microservices. Whereas uh, there are some application server which support to deploy the multiple jar files or application inside it. So similar things happen in a model server as well. Either you can deploy a single application in a model server, or you can deploy the multiple model, multiple models in the model server, okay? So KSERV uh, provide these two type of solutions, single model deployment and a multimodal deployment. So deploying one model, one model server, and the multiple models in the uh, one single model server, okay? So the first, uh, first component is like to deploy a single model into the one model server. Uh, it's pretty easy, uh, it's like that easy. So we have the single, uh, single port there, a single model server was running and we deploy a one model here. Okay, it's that easy. And it's using a cloud native technologies like a K-native serverless and the Istio. Uh, we, we all know that serverless uses to scale down to zero. Istio provides us good abstractions layers, authentications and proxies and everything, okay? Whereas the model mesh, uh, it's a little complex. So model mesh allowing to deploy the multiple models in the, in the single model server. So uh, actually these things uh, are very related or uh, I think very important. So in the field of, uh, like we do in, the, in our Java development, what we do, uh, we create an application, we deploy it, okay? and we see that if it is working or not, okay? Now, uh, if it is, if you find some more improvement, we deploy one more time. So, but in the term of models or in the AI ML, uh, we need to tune some parameters. So we tune some parameter, deploy the models, see the prediction, if it is working or not. Then we tune them again, uh, then see the predictions, okay? So this like, it requires multiple cycles. Now this type of deployment or this type of uh, structure is very important where, uh, we need to go through, to and through multiple times. We need to deploy the model multiple times to see the prediction. And we also need to compare like, okay, the prediction generated by the first models is better or the second model is better. So here we, what it allow, it allow you to deploy multiple models in a one model server. So you can run like thousands of models in the mo one model server itself. Okay, so just imagine how much space it can uh, save for you. And to show the, uh, the real numbers, so uh, these are some real number. There are 20,000 models that are deployed in just two ports using the model server, okay? Uh, even though the models they are deployed are very small, the simple string models, but yeah, it shows the power, like uh, how many models a data scientist can deploy there. So it saves, when it comes to the AI ML technology, it saves a lot of resources. So if uh, data scientists need to deploy a m multiple models and every time they spin up the new server, then the company might run out of the resources at some point. But uh, with a multimodal deployment approach, uh, you can just keep deploying the models in the same model servers with the less resources. Okay. Now there are some advanced features as well. Um, so explainer, transformer, and assembler. So explainer, we have all heard from the sir as well. Uh, like um, AI explainability is, is nothing, but yeah, we still have something in here. So explainer, uh, as we all know, to try to uh, describe how the specific answer come up. Okay, I will not argue about it. <laughs> Transformer capabilities are like uh, pre-processing of the data. Okay. And uh, ensembler capabilities are combinations of the several models to get one problem, to the one output. Okay. Now, uh, if we come to the no normal life, what we do, uh, okay, we need capabilities, we write a one microservice for each of them, okay? I need pre-processing, I wrote one microservice on which my data goes, filter the data, then fed into my model server. Similarly, a one microservice after that, 
uh, that's pretty simple solutions. But what it come with, uh, that we need to maintain those microservices by ourselves. So with KServe, uh, what it allow, it allow all of these functionalities, uh, like it come with inbuilt. You don't need to maintain those microservices by themselves, the KServe do. Okay. Okay, uh, now the what going on uh, in the area, so uh, what the community is currently focused on. So com community is currently focused on the large language models. So one of the issues that community is currently uh, working on is uh, to fetch those models. So uh, if I just give a hint, uh, like the size of the large language models, the LLM, like the BART, or I don't know the size of the chat GPT currently deploying, but yeah, this type of models come around 500 GB. They start from the 500 GB of memory. And if you need to spin up a port with that much of model that assume you need to load 500 GB inside the port and the port will start serving. And uh, now you are talking about to spin up the port in real time as the load come. So it's like a, it will take forever just to respond. So uh, the community is currently working to how we can uh, accelerate this thing, how we can remove this problem. So there are some solutions as well, like uh, we can upload the models in some containers and whenever the new port comes, we just attach that container to the port. So Kubernetes now have allow this type of transitioning, allow, I mean, till now the port are constrained within a container, but now the Kubernetes allow to do the post, like between the ports, we can map the containers as well. So this type of solution we are working on, we involve the uh, open inference protocol. So uh, normal protocol that we are following here, uh, the protocol that I described that every model server follows, uh, is uh, currently implemented for the small models, okay? But for the large language model to work, uh, they need more, more uh, function exposed, much more APIs, much more details. So, uh, so community is working to adopt the open inference protocol, which is a V2 version of the inference protocol, and to support the LLM specific runtime, okay? So uh, the servers that we have uh, seen here uh, in the first skitlearn, open VNO, TensorFlow, these are the runtimes, so we can say the servers. So uh, again, uh, the large language model are such used, they are that complex that we need a special type of servers for them, okay? So uh, yeah, this is where the community is currently focused on. Uh, these are some of the links of the community. Uh, if you want to join, like uh, you can your, start your career with there. Uh, you can just come up with the community. There are some good first issues. Uh, you don't need any AIML knowledge background. Means uh, some knowledge will be helpful to understand what the issue is we are talking about. But yeah, the implementation is completely in Go and Python and Java. So you can start picking it, contribute there. And yeah, that's all. <laughs> so any questions? So uh, let's say if I start with uh, KSL, can I just start deploying all the data models as you said with uh, KTS mesh and go ahead, or do you need anything apart from that? No, nothing. Uh, on the KT website, there are some installation instructions, like a simple start the mini. Okay, simply yeah. start the mini cube cluster. It uh, we just need to run some more controllers, which are the KSL controller. Uh, and that's it. So more like a Helm, I mean, KTS operator, which can, can right, deploy. Right, right, absolutely, absolutely like this. So everything is documented in case. Uh, right, uh, so are the, there are some CRDs exposed. So like I said, uh, there are two things, server and the model. So first we start the server, so one CRD to start the server, second CRD to inject the model onto that server. That's it, it's that simple. Uh, even, uh, do you have the sample data as well somewhere in case or? Yeah, yeah, sample data, sample models are there as well that you can use directly. Great, thank you, so I can even reach out to you on that Slack. Absolutely. Uh, Slack and community. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, we wrap up quite quickly. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Weber.